read all these different commentaries by Charles Hodge and John Calvin and, and uh, John Wesley and uh, Charles, you know, whatever, Adam's commentary, and on and on and on and on and on. They want to go to different seminars. They want to listen to renowned preachers like John MacArthur and R.C. Sproul and Billy Graham and, and Charles Finney and John Wesley and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones and Charles Spurgeon. Listen, you can study the Word of God for yourself and God can reveal his word to you through his Holy Spirit. You don't have to have uh, anyone else. You don't need the Pope. You don't need a priest. The Bible tells us that there's only one mediator between God and man, and that is the man Christ Jesus. Who was the best preacher that's ever walked the face of the earth? It wasn't the Prince of Preachers, Charles Spurgeon. The best preacher that ever walked on the face of the earth was Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the Living God, the um, eternal Son of the Living God. He was the uh, greatest, greatest preacher. If you want to get some good messages, Open your Bible and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Jesus wrote every one. Now, Jesus, now you, you say he didn't write it. Matthew, and Mark, Luke, and John. Well, John, Christ spoke through those writers his word. You know, if I were to talk to a new Christian, and I were to tell them, you know, the best way to approach the scriptures, here's what I would tell them. You know, start by reading the book of Isaiah. Why would I recommend them to read the book of Isaiah? Because the book of Isaiah is very clear. I am God and there is none beside me. Mm -hmm. It is an absolute exclamation of the sovereignty of God. Yeah. It doesn't talk about polytheism. It doesn't talk about yeah. many gods in there. Yeah. It's not in the pluralism. It's not in the psychology. Yeah. Then I would recommend them to read the Gospel of John, specifically the 6th and the 10th and the 17th chapters of John. might want to read the book of first book of Genesis, the creation account, the second book, the third book of Genesis. Read the book of Colossians, especially the first three chapters. Read the book of Ephesians, the first, especially the first two chapters. Read the book of Romans, especially the fifth chapter, the eighth chapter, the ninth chapter, and the eleventh chapter. Read the book of Hebrews, especially the first chapter, the second chapter, the eleventh chapter, the twelfth chapter. Mm -hmm. Read the book of Galatians, especially the first and the second chapter. Read the book of uh, Peter, <sighs> first Peter, and just read through first Peter and second Peter. My friends, if you read those those books that I just mentioned to you, and you study, and you study the center references in your Bible, if you have a center reference, and you study them cross-referencing, if you do that, you will find that there will be a great, great blessing for you. God will open His Word to you, and He will grant unto you uh, his spirit and you will never be the same again because his word is a light unto our path 
it's a lamp unto our feet. And what we will find is we will find a great, great um, blessing by reading his word. And also, it's an exhortation for us. It guides us into all truth. And it keeps us on the straight and narrow. Mark started this by saying that, you know, wanting to identify what is the anti-Christian church, what is the church of the Antichrist, and we've named many anti-Christian churches tonight in this talk. Now the question that we have to ask ourselves is, what is the uh, true biblical church? Is there one true biblical church? Is there one church we can point to and say, that's the one right there? Mm -hmm. No, we, we can't do that. But what we can do is we can say that God in his sovereignty has given us some assurance about one thing, that he will preserve his one true church. The foundation of God stand is sure. He knows who are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And God said that he would preserve for himself a church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. And he also said that he would um, bring that church into the great marriage supper of the Lamb one of these days. We're going to be gathered around the great white throne and we are going to have a tremendous um, there's going to be a tremendous celebration for those who have uh, been chosen in him from the foundation of the world. Jesus Christ has been given a group of people by the Father. All that the Father has given him will come to him, and all that come to him he will in no wise cast out. That's a great blessing. So when we think about these things, our admonition, exhortation, and warning is to stay in the Word of God. Father, we pray that you would take this discussion tonight and use it for your glory. We pray now. I'm going to have Mark read some scriptures for us. Back in the 119th Psalm, Mark. The 119th Psalm. Yeah. And uh, that's the longest psalm in the Bible. And it's the psalm that most uh, is most redundant in proclaiming the statutes and the words and the testimony of God. Yeah. Now, I want you to uh, I want you to read number uh, I'm going to give you the verses. Mm -hmm. Read number 11 and 12. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Okay, number 15. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect in thy ways. Number 16. I delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Okay. Um, read verses um, 45 and 46. And I will walk in liberty, for I seek thy precepts. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings, and will not be ashamed. Well, this has been a study on the Antichrist Church, and we hope that this has been helpful, and we pray that God will use it to lighten our paths as we live in these final, final days of the beast, the Antichrist, the Roman Catholic Church is the number one Antichrist church.